Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about linked lists in data structures. But before we dive in, let me introduce you to my learning data structures and algorithms course. It's completely free and it will stay that way forever. So don't wait any rule now to learn more. You will find the link to the course in the video description below. The first thing that we're going to start with is to explain what are linked lists. And in order to do that, I want to make a comparison between arrays and linked lists, arrays that we have seen in the last video. So, we've talked about three main points. We've said that arrays are linear data structures, which means that the elements in the data structure are arranged in a sequential way, like one after the other, which is the same case for linked lists. They are arranged sequentially. So, one after the other. The second point that we have talked or we have mentioned about arrays is that they are contiguous data sector, which means that the elements of the array are put in memory in adjacent locations, which is not necessarily the case for linked list. So, in linked list, the elements are put in non-contiguous manner. So any elements in the linked list can be at any position or at any location in memory. And the last point about arrays is that they have a fixed size. So we know in prior how many elements we are going to have in our array, which is not the case for linked lists, which are purely dynamic. Now let's get ourselves familiar with some terminologies related to linked lists. The first analogy is the head, and the head is a pointer to the first element in the list. And if you don't know what's a pointer, it's just uh, the location or the address of a variable in memory. The second terminology is what we call a node. And nodes are the building blocks of a linked list. They are often composed of two elements. First, a value, and second, a pointer to the next element in the list. And finally, we have what we call a tail. And tail is a pointer to the last element in the list. So these are the main terminologies related to linked list. Now let's move on to represent our example in memory. So first, let's assume that the head points to the address 100. So, which means that our first element is going to be located at the address 100. So the value of the address 100 is going to hold the letter E and a pointer to the next element or the next node in the list. So let's assume that the next node is at, at the position 130, so the letter S is going to be here. So, so our next element is pointing to the address 130. Now in the same way, let's put the third element or the third node on the address, for example, 190. So our third element is going to be of the address 190. So and let's say that the fourth element is of the address 146. The third element going to be at the address 46. In this case, we will have H here. And A and the address 146 represents the tail in our case. So the tail points to the last element in our list. So as you can see, the nodes in our list are represented in memory in non-contiguous manner, which means that they are not necessarily in adjacent locations. So this type of linked list that have one link between, only one link between two nodes, and they have 
a head and a tail are often called singly linked lists. Now let's move on to see other types of linked lists. We have the AA linked list. In this type of linked list, we each element or each node in the linked list have two pointers or has two pointers. A pointer to the next element in the list and a pointer to the previous node in the list. There are also what we call a circular linked list. And in circular linked list, there are singly linked lists with the only difference that the last element in the uh, linked list points to the head of the linked list. And the last type of linked list we're going to see is the skip list. The skip list are some kind of or some kind of special linked list that are composed usually of multiple levels. So in our example we have one level, two levels. So this kind of linked list is usually used to improve or to increase the search efficiency in a list. So if you have ever watched my previous video on big O notation, I presented the complexity chart and we have seen that linked lists usually have a linear complexity when it, or time complexity when it comes to the search operation. So skip lists allow you to reduce the time complexity for the search operation to O of log n or what we call the logarithmic time complexity now let's move on to talk about why would you use linked list in the first place so if you are facing a problem where you have a lot of operations of insertion and deletion you might consider using linked list why because if you take a look at the complexity chart you will find that insertion and deletion operations take constant time in average cases this makes them a good choice to approach such problems. The second point concerns memory management. So, in contrast to arrays, linked lists allow you efficient memory management. So, there is no wastage or there is no memory wastage. And the last point about why would you use linked lists is that they are at the base of other data structures, for example, trees and graphs. Now to finish this video, I would like to share with you an example of implementing linked list in JavaScript. You will find the link in the description below. So that's it for this video. I hope that you've learned something new today. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.